Um, you can. Um, last meeting was so long that I'm surprised we don't have hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> meeting is a place where the minutes are kept and the hours are lost. All right. So uh, I have I have a couple okay. of them. Um, on the towards the bottom of page one, after uh, Jennifer Cook voiced concern, blah blah blah. Um, I would take out Jennifer Cook voice, I take out general, and Jennifer Cook voice concern that the town scenic roads were getting wider and that Eversource was too aggressive with its cuts along Route 10 and on the common, because that, that's really what she, what I recall her saying. Because they weren't scenic roads. Yeah, but that yeah, was that, her comment. That, that was her comment. Yeah. It's just, uh, it wasn't, it, um, Let me jump back up higher on okay. that page. Uh, is uh, Dane Darkangelo's name with the lowercase a? Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Um, I'll have to double check, you check that I mean, because um, I think it is. Okay. Um, All right. It was a rather odd Fine. spelling. Just but I actually got it from his email. So. Yeah, we have them identified more and more. I mean, there are not too many. Um, and item three, okay, um, I think this is what happened, uh, item three, after that first paragraph, um, John and the Planning and Zoning Administrator pointed out that they didn't think that condo ownership can be prohibited. Um, at the bottom of the... Um, um, uh, John and the <coughs> Planning and Zoning Administrator, I forget his name. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out where you... Oh, right at the bottom of that that first item in item three. Oh, okay. At first, uh, John and Planning and Zoning Minister pointed out that they didn't think that condo ownership could be prohibited. So do you want it right there after... Um, so you're to end that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I think. Uh, yeah, you should... Should a common owner and should not be allowed to convert to common owner? And then yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes more sense. Okay. So what, what, what's it going to read? What do you have? Go ahead. Oh, I'm trying yeah. to get, let me finish. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> John and the zoning administrator believe that the condo ownership could not be prohibited. And I think that's all I got. Since I have changed my mind on that, but that's oh okay. <laughs> but at the it time, was true at the time. It was yeah. true at the yeah. time. I meant it back then. Yeah. Uh, and actually, going back to item two, the minutes. Did we agree to incorporate the ten goals? As no, part we did part not. Of the minutes? We did. No, I know we'd said we we've never done that, but no, no, there was no. no there was. Okay. So how can I mean, uh, how can people know that that was brought up and discussed and not? It was discussed. Mm -hmm. But how could people know? It said, it said in the minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. Didn't it? Uh, because you you said I mean, at the you said at the last meeting that I didn't allow it, which was untrue. Mm -hmm. um, what I said was that um, you said that I had asked you to do that and I hadn't had asked people to write language. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you passed out your goals, so it was discussed at length. Um, and I don't know what else is necessary. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, the other question I have, uh, going through the three points that I brought up the last time. Um, the three points? Yes. Uh, the board, yeah, the 
the, the bottom of page two, the new definition of senior housing, the board discussed the age restriction. Oh, okay, yeah. And no decision was reached. So I agree with that. Where? Uh, this is at the very bottom of page two. Where is the no decision reached? Uh, very bottom line. So the no decision was reached on the, uh, the issue of the age of the caregivers or other residents. Oh, okay. And then, um, that's, and I have kind of the same question for items two and three in that, that list. Uh, it notes that David recommended that they be separate items. Uh, was the decision made by the board? I don't remember a vote. No, there was no decision. There was no vote. There was so, no vote. Okay, so, so no decision was. I, I asked that it be incorporated. That no decision was reached there, and in the same for. No, the, I, I think it was the sense of the board that it didn't want to pursue that change in the definition of the of plan of development. That was my impression. Uh, uh, I don't think there was. was there, there was no decision. There wasn't a vote. Okay. Because there wasn't nothing something was even brought to as a vote. nothing was brought to a vote. Okay. All right. Um, and I mean, if you want to bring that up again, when there's well, a full board here, we can vote on it. And you want you know you want everybody. I don't yep. think it's bad to have everybody commit to. A, okay. All right. All right. Certainly welcome Good. to do that. Uh, and. Good. Then. We'll leave those as is. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so I'm going to vote. Oh, okay. yeah. I just want to make sure you're. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't make the mistake yet. Um, you didn't have anything. Please let it be noted that uh, Tim did not amend the minutes, which is a shock. Um, very unusual. Very unusual. Um, all right, I'd like to make a motion to. Uh, adopt the minutes as amended by John. You amended? Uh, Did you amend? You asked about. I asked about. So is that things? I so the only amendation is the one I made. So yes. uh, uh, as amended by John. Uh, all those. Oh, I need a second. All those in favor? Okay. So uh, just a technical question, David. Um, it's just the four of us. This isn't a voting here. There's so no I, voting. They so don't need no, to be appointed. There needs to be appointed okay. for anything. All right. So, uh, thank you for coming. Um, I, does everybody, everybody's here for senior housing, I assume. Right. Okay, has everybody gotten a copy or seen the senior housing uh, article that David? Oh, see a copy. Yeah. Three, I guess. Yep. yep. Great. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank David for doing this. Um, he, he took the initiative and it helps keep things moving along. My impression is what you did was you incorporated a lot of the talking points that, yeah. that had... I basically tried to look at what, to was, consensus. what there was uh, seemed to be board support for. Yeah. So, of course, what, what, what always happens, and it's I went, I went first on this, and you went second, and you went third, and what always happens is whoever writes it up gets slammed. So now, yep, so now, I can see now it's your turn. So I'd like to start with the um, with the board, and uh, after we have our discussion, I'll open it up to the public. So John, before yeah. we do that, yeah. um, I'd like to give a quick trip report of what I did this morning at the New Hampshire, Heis, uh, New Hampshire Housing Finance Associate Authority meeting, there was a conference on housing and the economy, and I think um, uh, I can do a, a more full report at that time. I was talking to well, Mike. Well, I'd like to do this, and, I, and then we I can think get to this, this. I think this bears very much on okay. what, so um, you'll, what you'll, you can do that, but I'd like to just move this along and go through this, and if you have comments that you want to make associated with that, then go ahead. Okay. Um, so, uh, since I have a prerogative, I'll go first. Um, down at uh, Article 13A, uh, uh, with a mixed use, 
I think we'd have to set some sort of a, a minimum of units that have to be senior housing. Uh, well, I, that's where um, I personally left that kind of open um, okay. because it will be there's a, um, a you know, the number of units for residential senior housing is will max out at 10. So there's it, there'll never be anything more than 10. Um, 10 on a particular development right. or 10 total in the land of In a particular development. Okay. Well, that, that may need to be, that was one of my comments on here was, I was unclear when I read that whether that applied to the lot or whether it was 10 overall yeah. for the district. So we just need to make sure that that's clear. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Um, so anyway, the, um, as far as the mixed use, you may want to set a, a limit, but it seems to me that if it, you have a new construction and you have are trying to um, <coughs> put in senior housing, you may be able to um, you know, be flexible with the amount of um, business uses, you know, assuming there's something that's compatible with senior housing. Um, yeah, I don't know if setting an absolute... We could set a percentage. Yeah. Just like if it's, yeah. you know, if if it ends up being 75% commercial and 25% senior, it starts to get a little away from what we're trying to do here. But anyway, I mean, everything we're discussing tonight is not going to get very far because we, we're missing so many members, but it's just these are comments for the, for the record, I guess. And then uh, with, with B, um, I would say that some sort of language where there could be a third, if the third is a, ca a caregiver uh, of some sort. Um, this is where I, I did some struggling. Um, when looking through uh, some of the DES regulations, they have a septic use of elder or senior housing. And there is a limit of two bedrooms with two residents and it uh, limits you to 125 gallons per day, or sets your, your flowage, septage flowage at 125 gallons per day. So when you're sizing a septic system. Per unit or per? Per unit. So for, that would be for two people, two bedrooms. And that's, is that related to senior housing or is that? Yes, that is specifically senior housing. Okay. So, say, say the number again, 125? 125 gallons per day. And so, when I'm looking at this saying, you know, how do you, um, you know, prevent you know, all the other things you're trying to prevent, you know, your, your septic system is going to be kind of your limiting factor. You start adding in more and more units of non-senior housing, your septic is going to go way up, and you may uh, not have enough for the, the lot. Because so, I, I, I saw um, the senior housing article or section. I'll have to look through my notes and find out which one. But they had um, a third available for... They may, but I'm, I'm just going just by DES regulations, and I don't know if there are, you know, it, it could you could allow for that, um, but I'm just saying the reason I came up with that okay. was because, based because on. Of that. So on, David, is that 125? Is that less because it's seniors? Or is much that, less. Okay. So if it was two non-seniors, it would be over 300 gallons a day. Really? Yeah. So they're assuming that seniors would use that much less. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, anybody? Teenagers who took six, seven hours to <laughs> right. wash their hair like my daughter and take six hours to wash her hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. So yeah, this, I did leave out the issue of a caregiver. Um, I wasn't quite sure how to or address that. But that if you. You know, it would have to be something that would be addressed during the, the development to develop, um, you know, 
a unit that has that can handle the additional uh, yeah, separate. The, there's I, I found language and I'll have to I'll have to get that language. I don't have it at hand, but I did find language that addressed that in another town. Um, with the dimensional controls, I think we you know we should probably nail more of that down than than um, is addressed here. I, I can kind of go through some of the way that some of this was okay. done. I looked at um, I said, there were several numbers bantied about for units from 750 to 1200. So I took the largest that was um, put out there and then I said well, um, what buildings do we have in town that are currently that we can look at and look at the scale and say what buildings could be used. If you look across the street at the old Green Mountain Studio building, that's about 14,000 <coughs> square feet of footprint. A footprint. A footprint. So if you look at that and say at 1,200 um, and then take away some for common area, um, you could get 10 uh, units in there on the first floor. So that will give people an idea of the scale of building that you would need for 10 full units. Because um, you're saying that all units should be on the first floor. That was again one of the things that came out of the discussion. Yeah, I don't know whether that was yeah. that was finalized. I mean, no, I, I mean there, nothing in this was finalized. Right. I, this was just information, information that, that came, out of, it came out of the meeting. I right. put it down on. You right, know, I understand. No, I'm, 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 so I, I think I don't know that we we can or should limit it to one. But if people want to do one, I mean, that, that's fine. There's a lot of them have elevators. And you know. Something that uh, it might uh, you want might want to bring Mike Monday in to talk about um, the, the, access, the, the access yeah. for fire. You know, the distance we don't have, in between uh, buildings. But we don't have you know a ladder truck in town, and so you know if there's a fire, it's going to have to come out of Hanover if they can't get people out. Um, right. So the, there yeah, is the safety issues are major. Yeah, and so I think it is a, a question um, okay. that Mike Monday should be That's should weigh point. in on. Very good point. Um, also, uh, I'd say um, I'm not sure. Again, and you just said that now, where it says all units shall be owned by a single owner. Yeah, I'm not sure we can do that because of that that uh, yeah. RSA. I'm not sure. The I took the the actual language out of. Um, the zoning for ADUs, because for an ADU, you are able to prohibit it. Mm -hmm. Although there is specific enabling language in the RSA when they wrote the ADU. Right, and that's where I did that. So I that I just took it out of there, and so I'll you know, yeah. be clear that that's it. May be that you can't. But yeah, I just I, I'm um, wondering. I, mean, I think that's something. First of all, we had, the full board would need to decide whether that's something we would want to do, and if. If the full board did want to do that, I think we would need legal advice, because I, I don't think we can. Um, it was discussed, so you know, it is yeah, there, okay. and like I said, there was somewhat of a precedent for the ADUs, so I used the, the existing language. And I think we'd need um, some language like uh, you know, ADA requirements and HUD. HUD uh, Applicable, applicable compulsory requirements of HUD regulation. That's you know, pretty boilerplate for senior housing. And then the the owner is responsible for providing proof of occupant's age. And I and, and could you explain uh, uh, the? All right, well, I'll get to that in a second. The other thing, just for everybody's information. I did some research because this has come up over and over again about what are the sizes of that are commonly used for senior housing. So on the on Kendall's site, I went, I went, uh, went to Kendall and I went to the Greens. Uh, Kendall units start at 550 square feet, 
and the largest unit they have is 1350, but that's an exception. So three bedrooms. No, nothing is bigger than two bedrooms. Really? Yeah. Um, so uh, 550, uh, really up to about 12 something, and then there's this one that's at 1350, I think. Uh, but you can look at the website and, and see. If, so, so the range is like, it's uh, people were saying, oh, you know, 750 is the smallest that it's, it's used, but that's not the case. And um, it's hard to get too much information about the greens, but they have 28 units. Um, they did have two a, a, a unit for sale and a unit for rent that both were one bedrooms and uh, they were 590 square feet. So these are a lot smaller on the low side than what we were thinking were commonly used, uh, just for information. So we're just saying up to, so if someone's building it, they can, they can they yeah, can whatever works. Yeah, yeah. it had just come up over and over again that, that what's a reasonable, what's a reasonable or commonly used small size for a unit? And these were smaller than anything we were discussing. Do they talk about how much common space and all is available to, to people? I'm sure they do on the sites, of course. Right. I mean, because obviously you yeah. can have a, a pretty small place if you've got some place to right. go. Yeah. So right. Right. And we need, in our calculations, we need to be able to factor that in. Sure. Yeah. And some of that will be market driven too, in that the square footage will affect cost and it will also affect exactly. people don't want to have to try to clean and maintain right. that many square feet right. in their senior years, generally. Um, well, it also provides for affordability. The, the possibility yeah, for affordability and flexibility and, and having a variety of sizes, which both of those right. places do. Um, and then, <coughs> could you explain the, the uh, the plan development. Uh, the, I was looking, you know, again, trying to go back through and see all the areas that would need to be get some modifications. Uh, growth floor area has always bothered me because um, the if you look at the way it's written, um, except for where I put in for plan development in bold, um, that's how it reads in the zoning ordinance, and I don't understand where. The planning board would be making a determination of uh, the uh, growth floor area. And, you know, I think that, that um, I'm not quite sure what was meant by that when they made that change. Um, it happened in 2004, and that was what was the change in the town warrant. So I don't know. In the, in the warrant? Yeah, the, 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 they added 516. And with the exception of the where I have in bold for planned development, um, that was how it was written. And the growth floor, floor area. So something was taken out then? No, it, that was the first time you actually see um, 516. Oh. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure. And so I'd, just, I'd like the board to kind of look at it and see so if there's something in there that, you know, it seemed to me that they were talking about plan development. Okay. And that that needed to go into plan development. But it, uh, it in 2004, um, Table 5.1 had a bunch of um, footnotes to it. And then at the, two, well, it was 2004, but it was a 2003 year end, but 2004 town meeting, the, um, they broke up those footnotes into section five, um, which included the um, you know, all the different dimensional controls. And I, I just I don't know what they meant through the. the so so you, 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 you're saying we, we need to address that at some point. I just I'd like to bring it to the board's attention. Okay. It's, it to me it it doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah, is gross floor area the same as building footprint? No. Or is that just total? It's like a total all floors. floors. All floors. Right. Yeah. And so here it's talking about the planning board has the ability to um, approve greater than 14,000 square feet, but 
it doesn't ever go on to say where the planning board or when the planning board would be doing that. Um, you, it, I believe, was around the time that they were redoing part of the line in, and it may have been part of uh, trying to help adapt the zoning to help with some of the, the larger floor area of that. But I, I don't. It doesn't. It's, it's a little weird because it's it's kind of giving the planning board special exception, right? With no, but it, with, with no, no guidance. With no guidance to when they are supposed to be doing this. Yeah, and it's also mentioned the ski wing district too, which is is that when the, uh, the new <laughs> lodge was the new ski lodge was built. It might there. also have been it was right around there. Yeah. Uh, so that could have been that. Yeah, I don't know. There's no. I have no record of. And I did go through some of the planning board minutes back then, and I didn't find any real discussion of why. They were making those changes, and just so this change doesn't make, or the section doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, and so I just okay. So I'm, I'm reading. If you have three lots, then you get forty-two thousand square feet. Uh, yes, if you could, but if you're still limited to, <coughs> as in a rural district to a building that's seven thousand square feet, and a height restriction of thirty-five feet, you three lots. You know, you, you get that third floor. You're not going to get anything. All right, let, let's yeah. just mark that down as something we have to address okay. because we have people who are here yeah. for senior housing. So, uh, other people's comments on David's stuff? Um, I just had one comment on the first page, bottom of the first paragraph. Senior housing should be consistent with the present character of the village. I, I wonder whether we should say structures should be consistent. Well, I, 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 I could have the village because I mean, I wasn't going to just say structures, you know, it's still the, the whole character of the village, um, not just the structure. And, um, and I didn't write it as a shall. Um, I meant to try to keep it as, you know, I don't want to say a suggestion, but... Well, there's, uh, in, in a lot of the language I saw, it's pretty common for there to be a har either harmonious or in character. You, you got to visit. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a common. You, you have that as senior housing should be consistent with the present character. You have that specifically as a should. Well, right. in and most of the language I read, it, it's, it's a shall. shall. That's it's a shall. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's well, shall and should are different. So it's implied. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We're just, <laughs> I know. Well, so, no, it's, it's an, it, you're implying that it should be done that way. It's not saying you shall do it, you will do it. Shall and must are pretty much synonyms, and right. they are requirements. Right, yeah. and that's should, why I, should is a suggestion. Right, and that's where I, um, yeah. I struggled with that because, it, you know, and maybe that the board wants to say shall, but well, that's fine. You, that's provisional, and the board will yeah will make the decision. But we're just implying that senior housing means the structure. Yeah, but I mean, you still have the the the, the landscaping around. You know, if you. Um, <coughs> yeah, put up a uh, you know, an iron fence that doesn't go with any of the other fences in town. You know, it just makes it stick out. Um, oh, yeah. You know, there's okay, so you, yeah. or, you know, big boxy brick Soviet-looking building in the middle of downtown. Probably right, you know, it's a, <laughs> yeah. isn't isn't what we want. <laughs> Soviet senior housing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anything else? No. No? I got anything I have was covered. Yeah? Okay. Uh, you got um, it? Yeah, I was, you had talked about the mixed, maybe mixed use. You had mentioned the, maybe a limit on mixed use. I'd throw out maybe 50%. As a, as a working number just to, to think about because I'm thinking if, if you had a situation where the first floor was all residential and the second floor was all professional offices then that would be roughly 50% I think that's kind of a 50% of the floor area or uh, that's the gross floor area yeah that's what you uh, maybe mixed use yeah um, that's all use and nothing for it yet so um, which, which I agree. I agree that you don't want to have somebody come in and say, "I'm going to do 80% commercial and 20% uh, 
senior yeah. and call it senior and, and try to market it as senior housing. That's kind of not really what we're thinking of. But so that's why I, I, I would say, as a as a default number, I would lean toward something like fifty percent. Let's have maximum. that as a provisional yeah. starting point. Uh, yeah. When everybody's here, we can hash it out. And again, I'm going to just make my point on some of these things is. Um, just like we talked about it being on the ground floor. We can, we can change our mind later if we decide that people, you know, if, if, if you come up with a model, I'd rather be a little more restrictive and have people say, this is not workable, you need to make it better, than to make it so broad and, then pull back. and that you're trying to pull back after somebody's already got an application in the door for mm -hmm. something that we're going, to, oh, wow, we didn't really think of that. So that's my approach. Okay. Um, and that was um, when you talk about common areas may be allowed. Um, we might want to be specific that common areas aren't included, are not included in the unit square footage. So if you say twelve hundred square foot, somebody might ask, is yeah. that? Average, including the common area, or is it 1,200 for the common area for that? And then I can have a common area on top of that. Um, so that just needs to be clarified a little bit. And then when you said maximum units may not exceed 10, or, um, in no way it said they exceed 10. Again, we're talking about on a lot. Um, not total in the district. Um, again, we just be a little clear on that. Okay. Those are my That's it. Reflections. Okay. Uh, were there any comments from the public that, that came in? I mean, yes, I know I, I have that. I have. Okay, I got an email from uh, Ellen. Right. Yeah. Yes. one and pass the stack to everyone else. Yes. Oh, so this, this we each get one of these. Each get one of them. That's just I only received one. Okay. So you're enough for the yeah. public of that. Yeah, there should be plenty to To she wrote to me and, and, and I, I was CC, yeah. yes. Do we want to make that available to the public as well? I, I can just read Ellen. Sure. I, I can re read what Ellen wrote and mm -hmm. what I wrote to her. Once everybody's done with their reading, let me know. Put your head on your desk. Yes, put your, <laughs> put your hands on your desk and your pencils down and pass your blue books forward. Oh, God, it still makes my stomach yeah. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> stomach turn. Yeah. All right, and even worse, I shall now do a dramatic reading. If you're, Is everybody done? 
Are you done? Did I interrupt you? Okay. All right, so Ellen wrote, um, I understand the planning board will discuss senior housing at tomorrow night's meeting. I don't know. Okay. I'll leave that part out. I believe Lyme citizens would benefit from having senior housing available to them as they try to age in place in Lyme. I have heard from many about how difficult it is to find housing in town that meets their needs, accessible and manageable to the owner. Social socialization and the ability to access key services, food, banking activities is important, and having housing in a central area like the common district is nice, but you could also achieve this by having condos or apartments clustered together. I am concerned that converting older homes on the common into senior apartments will be too expensive and difficult for a developer to even consider tackling, consider the need to adjust doorways, bathrooms, stairways to meet the needs of older individuals. Also the need for a variety of unit sizes to meet the needs of couples and single folks. It is hard to downsize, but going to 600 square foot unit will take the special person parking may also be an issue. The Greens in Hanover is a nice combination of independent living with supports as needed or desired. Something like this could blend into the landscape of Lyme. Hope these thoughts add to the conversation tomorrow. Okay. And I wrote, um, thanks for your honesty. Uh, we obviously agree about the importance of senior housing. I am primarily concerned with 62 and older dem the uh, 62 and older demographic. The centralized location seems preferable for obvious reasons in terms of the viability. We had a builder who I did not identify, Brett. Uh, at the last couple of meetings, we assured the board that there are properties in the proposed senior district that could be developed affordably if senior units could be made up to a maximum of 1,000 to 12,000 uh, to 1,200 feet, square feet. The build out the board undertook also suggested potential viability. All that said, I'd certainly like more reassurance, but these are positive signs. Up to this point, new construction is included in the proposals, so conversions are not the only option. Though I hope we can get something going in the central area, if necessary, I'm open to considering something in the south of town, likely in the commercial district, where there is a good amount of undeveloped property on the east side. That area is about five minutes from doctors, dentists, shopping, and Kendall's public programs. This is also closest to downtown Hanover's amenities and DH. Um, sizes of units at Kendall start at about 550 square, uh, square feet, with largest about 1350. The Greens has a couple of one bedrooms for sale or rent right now that are 590 square feet. Uh, this info f from their respective websites, so some 600 square foot or 750 square foot units in the mix seem to be the norm. Um, she had mentioned the Greens, so uh, it it's hard to know what the overall square footage is for the greens, what the, for the greens is, but here's a rough guess. 28 units averaging 800 square feet is 22,400 square feet, plus common areas, dining room, lounges, etc., would probably certainly make about 25,000 square feet. That's quite big for Lyme, especially given that we have no municipal sewer system. I'll try and let you know what results uh, from tonight's meetings are, if time permits, and et cetera, et cetera. So, a um, couple things that I just picked up from there. We talk about common areas. We also might want to discuss storage or garages. Um, because if we're limiting the units, how do we count for those? Because some people may want. Yeah, they, there's you know, Okay, I don't need to, I don't need to heat all my all my junk, but I still want to have a right. place where I can put my stuff and go get it when I want it. Yeah, Kendall certainly does. Yeah. So storage so those, are, those are two things to consider. In, there is a um, fit in the gross floor area, but maybe not in the residential unit right. area. The, uh, there are parking formulas for senior housing that I also found in other towns. Um, um, and then the idea that you might want to limit it to three residents where two of the three are over 62 would allow for a couple to perhaps have a caregiver. Um, I don't know if that's, if that's feasible um, for some of the larger units. If you're talking two bedrooms, you could have two. So, so go over that again. 
um, instead of instead of saying it'll be limited to two residents where one is over 62, which assumes a single person and a caregiver, or two people, it doesn't give you the option of two people plus a caregiver. So I would say maybe we think about limiting it to three, where two of the three are over 62, which would be. So what if what if somebody's 62 and and has a spouse that's 60? I'm just throwing it out. That, I, I would you know, say that. The, 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 more the, the more efficient way might be to just say, if you if you can have a caregiver, okay. and as a third occupant, maybe that's a better way to do it. But it just it seemed like limiting it to two people is pretty restrictive. Yeah, I think we need we need to make a provision provisions for a third person. Again, I, my sole reason for limiting it that was uh, just to try to maximize the, the septic. Because um, now, because now you you by adding that third person, um, it's now going to be considered a two bedroom um, unit, and that can drip to three hundred gallons per day. Right, is what the the, the flow would be. And if you is. had, if you had two people, and then their caregivers were adult children, um, then that's four people. Um, then I would say. That's not really senior housing. I mean, no, it's kind of senior housing. I mean, it's a, I think it's a different a limit, situation. There's a limit right. to Right. So you just say that okay. that there's other ways to deal with that. That's not what, exactly and I, what we're and trying I don't, to And I don't think you're going to have two grown children living. You might have one. Uh, I, I could well, see there's there's a husband and wife that are that's possible. caring for one but, of their parents. I mean, their unless parents, we get that's into the only... Once we or, get into four. or two parents. That's my point. Is 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 you have two parent, two elderly parents. That a child with a, who's married comes to take care of them. Is that accommodated here? I would say, that's an in, that's an interesting situation, but that's not. That's it doesn't have so to be. So part that's of something we're going to have to address. Right. But I think everybody. I set hope everybody. Or I, I shouldn't say I hope I. I was going to ask the other question. That suppose you have a qualifying couple, a 62-year-old and a 57-year-old spouse, and suddenly they have to take care of their parents. They've got a second bedroom. They could do that. You mean the, the 62-year-old has to take care of their 90-year-old parents? Which does yeah. happen. Which happens. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, so I have, I have a lot of comments on this, uh, okay. and so... I, I, let, let's let everybody else go through. With okay. Um, so we're done for the moment here. Um, public, speak your speak your speak. Please. Boldly go forward. Um, have you reached out to or, or checked on Quail Hollow? Um, I they haven't. Have, uh, they're very. It's uh, senior housing, <coughs> marketable or market level, and also assisted. Um, they've got storage things you can buy. Oh, yeah, so hold on, I'll just, yeah. just slow down here. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Quail Hollow, what are the two things? Um, Mar market, market value and also um, <coughs> or, uh, uh, yeah, affordable. Affordable, affordable. so value. is that? They also have condominiums. So um, when you say uh, affordable, is that subsidized affordable? Uh, it is, like a third of your income. Yeah, you know, based on based on your so total. is because all of the all of the all of the subsidized ones I found were were done privately, you know, like a group in the town got together, uh, like in in Norwich where they have twenty four. Um, that's a HUD, you know, it follows HUD down the line. Or it's it's very strict in terms of. of who can live there? Um, and I know in in Hanover now they're doing stuff, and and Twin they the town owned the yeah. property. So uh, if it's subsidized, that we can't we can't do that. Okay. They've got market value or market value okay. apartments okay. also. Something to think about. Yeah, but they do have storage you can get, you know, bins or storage area and parking. So, which is available, yeah. and um, I can bring you a brochure. Sure, that'd be great. And do you know how big it is, um, roughly? I don't. The ones I've looked at are, um, I think, are one bedroom, and it's a very good size. I mean, it's, yeah, um, 
And, and where is it? It's in, uh, is it West Lebanon? Lebanon? It's on the way to, on Route 10 going toward. The first set of lights by the highway garage should go out towards uh, at Okay. And it's right on, I forget what road that is. What's that? Is that Quail Hollow? No, Quail Hollow is on Route uh, 10. Route 10? 10. Oh, what, uh, 120? It's, it's going down to West Lebanon. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking okay. the wrong. Yes. Quail Ridge down there, there's a quail hollow. It gets confusing. Yeah, I have a lot of quails, and then actually, we don't have quail in New England, which is kind of funny. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, did you say you have a, a brochure? I do. Oh. Yeah, I can find that right too. That'd be great. Um, the other thing, is, one other question is if you, uh, you said a land available toward um, the east side of um, you know, near the, the commercial the, district. The commercial if it's close enough to Hanover, I'm just asking, is maybe it, could you link with them as far as sewer or you know, water? I don't uh, think the sewer comes out that far. It doesn't, okay. That's a long the third question I have is, um, it kind of, it, well, maybe I'm trying not to be upset, but... Um, uh, you can be upset. Okay, I can be an, an outraged, but yeah. perturbed. Go ahead. <laughs> The comment about the, the maximum number of residential units if not, should not exceed or shall not exceed 10 and a random number pulled from a hat. That's we've been, I want to know more about that because we've been working on aging in place. I, I, think, yeah, I think that was an unfortunate. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I basically, I, I, what I wanted to make a point is I wasn't trying to say that that was a number that was hard and fast for any particular reason. It was kind of a general. Um, Number. I apologize. I do That's not big, want yeah. to. Um, <laughs> we, we needed. We needed a number, and yeah. that was a number that was mentioned. That was That's really all. I've got it five was. people who are looking for housing right now. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that's yeah. half the ten. I'm like, okay. What would you prefer? Um, I would. Uh, I would like more. I mean, for me, and I know I might be, you know, kind of in the minority, but I would like senior housing. Um, we but that all. number is 10 per lot. It's not 10 it's overall. Not, yeah. That's and why I asked it. Two or three stories. Yeah, I mean, if that's allowed, and yeah. right. um, then you might have more than that. Right. Well, well nor, I mean, but when, yeah. when you and I spoke, you mentioned a number far bigger than that. Do you mind if I say that? Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think you said... 500. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Fine. But I think, well, you, said, I think you said 20 units it would be just fine. 20. I mean, based on what the location, so, situation. So if there were 20 averaging what? A thousand? No, even less than that. We can downsize really well. So, so say 20, where you think 800 is reasonable? 16,000 plus. 16,000 plus common area. 25,000. Yeah, that's yeah. that's big. And and I mean we're right now we're talking about the common. I think if it was in in the uh, commercial district, you know, there there could be. Fred's well, building could accommodate that. Uh, Twenty units. Yeah. Both in floor plan and in. You well, talk about could, could, no, actually, yeah. how, how many square feet is not sure. that you want to do that? No, no, no. Yeah. Well, in terms of the scale, it was a, it was a measure, measuring yeah. stick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's, I think a building that size can look okay, but I can't really see how you're going to pack a building that size anywhere in a reasonable fashion. And while that building physically could accommodate the floor, just the square footage of the units can't handle the septic. And, and the nitrates loading on that lot, it's a four acre lot, can't handle it. Okay. So it, yeah, it, won't, it won't go through the septic. It, it, and that's, you know, Dave and I talked about a lot of these numbers and it kind of makes a full loop. And the 1,200 square foot number wasn't that all the units had to be that size. But when you look at a 750 square foot unit and you put in a nice handicapped bath accessible so somebody can be in there and help somebody else in the shower and the whole business, 750 square feet is getting pretty small. And, and uh, you know, there's a section in my own house which is 32 by 32, call it 900 feet. And you can kind of see how that would all lay out. The 1,200 feet gives somebody some flexibility. You know, oh, absolutely, yeah. And I'm, I'm just saying, saying that as a maximum. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the, the thing that surprised me about the low end of the, these, these ones at Kendall and 
the Greens is they have the their ADA compliant. Oh, I'm sure they are, but you know, when it, it comes it down to you know the, the the bathrooms that we put in the houses that have been going in to replace others and so forth, those bathrooms are you know pretty good size. Um, when you start, you know, we just put one in for some elderly people in town here, and. Um, it takes some room to, to, to have yeah, somebody help sure. somebody else through the shower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kendall accomplishes that too by making all of the services except for eating and sleeping and going to the bathroom available outside the unit. So, and even eating, very few people I think eat in their units. They all. But there are there are kitchens. Yes, but if you're talking about a small unit, it's small only because all of the ancillary services are available outside their bedroom door. Right. So, yeah. Whereas something in Lyme, I'm not necessarily sure that, that, that our, uh, our first senior housing projects are going to offer the scale of services that a Kendall would offer. No, I'm sure they won't. So, yeah. Well, and again, my, th my thought is to get started, whereas it would be nice to be able to accommodate something larger than that. What we don't want to do is make it so that the first project in the door is huge and everybody gets really mad and then suddenly senior housing is not what people want because they think if we're going to do it, we're going to end up with a whole Kendall right downtown or something like that, which I just, I'd be a little bit concerned that that we, we I'd rather start on a, on a, I agree. On a feasible scale and then expand it if we have more demand. Or if somebody comes in with a reasonable proposal and says, I'd love to do this, but I'd like to put in 24 units, I have a 50 acre lot, I think I can figure this out, then we figure out whether it's feasible or not. Um, um, and, and to the point about that somebody here made, is it's, the 10 is, is provisional, that was just used. Uh, but um, whatever the limit is, that's just for a lot. That's not you. You can. It's, you can only have ten in line. That's not what's. <laughs> Anything else? I wanted. Oh, hey, anybody else? No. Right. Um, again, back to some of what Dave and I talked about between the septic system. Uh, and I don't remember where I came across the information. Parking, for example, um, in senior housing, allow a space and a half for parking. When you factor those things in, the septic loading, it really comes a full circle package where everything, the numbers fit, as far as the septic loading per acre. When you start getting a building over a certain percentage of the lot, you, you, you run into the septic problem. So as, as an in-town lot, smaller or larger, it 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 almost ends up having to adhere to a lot of the other requirements of the ordinance, even if they weren't specifically listed. So you're, you're saying it's kind of self-limiting? It, it really gets to that place, and the septic is the key to it. And, and um, when you look at the numbers uh, to build, you know, say a 1,200 square foot unit, what those units are worth on a, on a rental basis, um, all those numbers work as far as you know, the viability of somebody building it. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I'm curious to get Brett's opinion, but I am, uh, I'd like to address the issue of affordability. Um, as the, uh, arguably the only person to have ever done affordable housing in Lyme, donating a lot, Tina and I did, to um, Habitat for Humanity and building with the whole community a house there. We then struggled to find an appropriate Lyme resident uh, who could take over uh, that property. And I think the planning board knows that 30 plus percent of our houses are, uh, are already affordable. Uh, they, they meet the, uh, the threshold requirements for affordable housing. I question the need to put that constraint uh, on senior housing when you're trying really to attract 
something that we don't really have to the community and you're loading it up with further constraints. And I think senior housing by definition, I think Brett would concur with this, is going to be more expensive. You're going to need bigger bathrooms, uh, more expensive fixtures, bigger halls. You're probably going to need sprinklers. You might need elevators if you want to do second floor. I think it's a, uh, a real mistake to limit it to ground floor only. But I think no matter what, the square footage costs are going to be significantly higher for senior housing than they would be for normal uh, residential housing. OK, I'm just a, a little confused there. I get what you're saying about the affordability. Yep. Are you linking that to it being on the first floor? Well, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I don't, um, I don't agree with restricting senior housing one to ground floor only. I, I don't either. Uh, but that was mentioned, I think. Yep, it yeah. was here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to address the issue of affordability, I, I question, uh, I'm not going to necessarily question the need, because I'm sure that there is a need. But I think if you're trying to attract developers to uh, trying to encourage them to consider a senior housing project in line to put uh, a constraint of uh, limiting it to a certain age group, uh, limiting it to an economic group, limiting the size of the units, I think you're putting too many constraints you mean, on there. You mean put it, limiting it to, to seniors at all? No, uh, well, I guess I have trouble with saying they have to be 62 and over. Um, what would you like it to be? Well, I think they're, uh, I would say 50. I mean, I think I know people who are in wheelchairs at 50, and they need, quote, unquote, senior housing. They need so just senior housing, according to HUD, yeah. you have to allow um, disabled people <coughs> to, to live there. So. That's already addressed. Yes, but if you're restricting it to people 62 and over, you're eliminating, aren't you? Or aren't you in conflict with that same HUD requirement? No, because uh, so you could be 50 you, years you old. Could, you could be 50 years old okay. and live in a senior housing project. Okay. If you're disabled. I, if you're disabled. If you're disabled. I, I thought I read that you have to be 62 and over here. Yeah. That, that language, that language isn't in there, but it's in, it's in the HUD requirements to qualify to limiting it to 62 and over. Okay. And the 62 and, and over, from my point of view, um, is uh, everybody can obviously has different opinions, but I, from the, the time I spent going to the aging in place meetings, and I went for, for several years, I never once saw a 55-year-old there. Uh, the average age was definitely old, older than 62, and the people who are interested, I wasn't 62 yet at that time, um, but um, the people who are interested were people who were going to be 62 by the time, uh, that's what I saw. And uh, I think that the most, My opinion is that the people who need this the most are people in Lyme who are older and in a more vulnerable situation, don't want to leave town, and this is a way to address that demographic. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I, I think it's important that there's a way for people to downsize in line yeah. uh, when they're older. And when it's 62 and older, realistically, um, you're, we're not necessarily talking about people in their 60s. We're talking about people possibly in their 70s and 80s um, and who are still um, spry enough to, to live on their own or, or mostly on their own. Well, and I think there's a market and a need for that in town. I guess what I'm, uh, you know, the if you look, you're, you're quoting the square footage for the units of Kendall at, uh, what, five, six, eight hundred square feet. From five to thirteen. Well, you know, their starting price now is like six, seven hundred thousand dollars per unit, and that's not an investment, that's something you, you give oh, it's, up. Oh, it's, it's unbelievably expensive. So, 
if uh, you know how are you going how as a developer are you going to provide something that's even remotely comparable I, I can't answer that but I will say that there was a builder here the last couple of times who said that it could be done he felt it could be done uh, affordably in town that's it yeah. I'm not expert in it but my understanding of the service package at Kendall is you're getting more than just the housing for that money you're getting well, the right to use, other yeah. to other services where we're not that's not, we're not including that in here yeah, but then the monthly fees right. are you know I think those started around seven thousand yeah, yeah we're not doing Kendall <laughs> right. so I mean I think to speak to Kendall there's a there is a big upfront payment mm -hmm. that's an endowment that keeps the place going, that pays for you as you get older, um, and they can have the facilities in place. So, yeah, I mean, you're not... It's a different package. It's a different package. There's an upfront charge to get in the door, and then you have the monthlies, and, and I, don't, I, I don't know their monthlies. Um, it's on, it's on so the website, yeah. and it, so, you can go to their website. Let me and, and, just make one further comment. And then I'll, I'll be done. I think that you are trying to encourage uh, the first developer to set up shop here in town and do a senior housing project. And I think in order to do that, you should look at ways to cut as many constraints as possible. Uh, lot loading, frontage, setbacks, uh, gross square footage, uh, affordable price, number of people in units, I think all of those are uh, hurdles that do, do, Does it say anywhere in here uh, about affordability? No, there was nothing Afford in there. There's nothing about affordability. Yeah, but all, everything but, else but you have But you have had further, uh, you have had conversations, I believe, about affordability. Yeah, but, but there's nothing in here that would restrict a developer from doing unaffordable housing. <laughs> right. Okay, so that is not a provision. It's not in here. Okay. All right. we so, well, there's one eliminated. Well done. So, yeah, I think that's, I, I, I agree. And a big one. I think that's what we're doing. But I I just think that it should be for seniors. And I, I mean, I guess I agree with the 62. But I agree with you as far as <coughs> we should relax a lot of this so it can. Well, that's, you know, E, the dimensional controls are set by the planning board during, you know, the site plan review. Mm -hmm. So you, as a developer, can come to the board and say, I want to expand out this much on this lot. Um, here is my, my septic plan that I can get approved by the state that's reasonable. Here's the parking. Here is the building footprint. And the board can approve that. So it... And so you're saying it does allow for a lot of flexibility? It allows for uh, complete flexibility. There's, there are no limits yeah. that have been set by... Um, what is written right now. Other, um, than, other than the state septic report. Right, the state septic, and there's no way we can get around that, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the idea was to allow the planning board to work with the developer to say, you know, this is what, um, you know, the lot you're doing it on, is it appropriate for that lot? You know, are you trying to build out so much that, you know, you're putting your building you know, 10 feet from the next building? And then Mike Mundy's going to have a fit because his, you know, the exposure is too great. Uh, that type of thing, the board can say, yeah, no, that's a little bit too big. But it does allow for, uh, there's no, it doesn't put any specific limits other than the, the size of the unit and the number of units on a single lot. Yeah. So, John, did you want to say something? Yeah, and this comes back to, you know, you were talking about the should and shall business early on. Mm -hmm. And you and I talked about that. And one of the reasons the conversation went to the should as opposed to a shall is it allowed the planning board to have a little more leeway to um, approve something that was agreeable to the particular neighborhood and find a way to let something happen all at the same time. Yeah, and that's that's a balancing act because... Always. Yeah, we're, I mean, we want to pass something. Mm. And... We also have to be mindful of, uh, you know, this is going to be next door to somebody. Should, should still allows you to say no, yeah. would be my perception. But, but, but it's certainly, but, certainly something's going to have to go into the mix. But it's, it's, it's classic 
um, public balancing because there will be people who will try to push the, push the limits and bend all the rules to favor their project. That always happens. On the other hand, we will be trusted to try to enforce some of the more narrative characteristics of the town and everything. And you can be more prescriptive or you can provide more flexibility and the pendulum goes, the pendulum goes back and forth. And um, again, my, my preference from having been in this type of decision making in public services, start a little tighter and then loosen it if you need to, rather than start really wide and have somebody come in and then have something that's a little bit not what we imagined and then everybody in town is upset because um, something's happening that's not really what we intended. And I know that that seems overly restrictive to some, but that's just my, that's, that's my druthers because I've been burned enough in the other direction um, that I'd rather, I'd rather start and have people say, if I just had this, then I could make this a little bit more affordable and then maybe we can, we can work with it. Um, but if you just say, floodgates are open, everybody come on in, let's do senior housing, um, we'll get things that we don't, we don't want. That's just my philosophy. Okay. So, I, I have a lot of comments on this. I wanted to let everybody else weigh in so they don't have to reduplicate, as they say. Uh, I think, I'll, I'll just start at the top of my list here, that it's good that the planning board wants to have uh, senior senior housing. It's important to remember that neither the board nor the ordinance is going to create any senior housing. There's got to be a developer that feels motivated and feels attractive to come in and do this. Uh, and so that's the only way it's going to happen. This particular proposal seems like a complex and overly prescriptive set of rules that are really going to constrain the choices of anybody that comes in. Uh, there is no provision for flexibility. Uh, well, hold on. We just had that discussion and David was saying that it's extremely flexible. I, I'll address that in a minute. Let me, let me go through it. I've, I've sat quietly while other people talk. Um, there's, if, a, if a developer came in with a good idea that was not specifically called out in this and allowed in this, certainly it's my experience with the board that, these, that it's very difficult to get things through. So there's no mechanism for a special exception or other relief from strict rules. And how would a special exception work? I don't know. I'm just saying yeah, this. I think you need to be so, more specific. Yeah. You're giving some so very, I, very vague general criticism that is really not all that helpful. Um, you know, David, to so understand what you're, you know, to say there's no flexibility here, there's quite a bit of flexibility. Is there no flexibility outside of senior housing? Yes, because that's not what this is being uh, so developed. Let me, let me keep going. I mean, all, well, we can logic, debate. Not, just a minute. Yeah. We're having a conversation. So yeah. as you go along, it's not a lecture. We're going to talk with you about it. All right. Good. Somebody comes to, you know, I mean, we can make hypotheticals all day. A developer comes and says, I'd like, I can make this project work, but it only has uh, one parking space per unit. And I got 10 or 15 people ready to sign up and go, and they're happy with one parking space per unit. If the ordinance says you've got to have one and a half, does that shoot it down? Is that done? But we, we have flexibility under it. I, I would imagine. Under the review, there, there is plenty of flexibility. Yeah. There's is there? the, okay. the parking, right. there, there are, if you look at the, the site plan review regulations, mm -hmm. the parking um, is, the, is actually a suggested number. That when you look at the table at the, the back, okay. and the board right. tends to try to, to have people adhere to that so, because everyone wants to try to cut parking. But there is, the site plan review does allow for Okay. And uh, right. I'd add that, and I don't know what they are, but I'm pretty sure when I look at the HUD regulations that there are um, 
requirements. I, I, I don't know whether, I, mm -hmm. I think they were one, but I, I'm not sure. I can't sure. remember. Okay. Um, uh, the wording of the proposal seems to say that the planning board is responsible for making design decisions, decisions about size, adequacy of soils and all, and traffic safety. And how is the planning board going to have the expertise to make those decisions? The same way you found out with Pinnacle, that the applicant is going to end up, you know, the state law allows the planning board to charge the applicant to show to prove his right. viability. So uh, why in most cases, so let, let, no, so no, good. No, let me finish. You know, in cases of septic, mm -hmm. that's going to be done through a septic designer. Mm -hmm. That is, yep. that they're going to have to do that. There is no option of not doing that. Um, so the, you know, those types of things I don't think are overly burdensome. Why? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do them. Why does it say the planning board shall yeah. determine? Why can it not say? No. I, no. Why can it not say you have to have a state approved septic? You know, show me your state approved septic. Show me your uh, well these traffic are, study. Again, show me. I don't have. I have no problem going through this language and and if we could nail certain things down, what, okay. right. that'd be fine. Okay. This is provisional language. All yeah. right. Um, uh, the proposal in the proposal. It says that the board retains the power to deny a project based on its lack of suitability to the character of the land and neighborhood and the present uh, character of the village. Um, it sounds as if, even if you meet all the other standards, the board could decide, oh, this doesn't match the nature of the, of the village. How would a developer the, know? The board, first of all, is not allowed to be capricious. Any decision that it would make would have to be based on, on a sound basis. But again, this is provisional language, mm -hmm. and I'm open to changing it. Okay. And uh, I think the, the, you know, the, the in part of the, the, the very beginning, the senior housing should be consistent with the present character of the village. Mm -hmm. It's not a will be, it's not a shall be, it's should. Mm -hmm. So it is not something that is giving the board permission to deny it's describing what it believes senior housing and, and, and on a practical level, mm -hmm. Rich, um, I don't think we'd, we'd be able to pass anything that didn't address neighborhood concerns. That's pretty well, much the board's job. Yeah, and this so you know, this would okay. come yeah. pretty, pretty much out of the master board plan. Board. To, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they, they uh, go uh, I'm, I'm just going to stop you for a minute because there was a raised hand. So um, I think some of What's being brought up is is how restrictive this is for somebody that might want to put in uh, housing such as this. Um, I don't. There's this whole developer builder sort of thing, and I don't view myself more as renovating properties or buildings, mm -hmm. uh, so that you know buy ramshackle places basically. And um, if this is passed more or less under the guidelines that the rough language that's there, I think there's a huge amount of flexibility for somebody to make something happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see it as uh, restrictive at all. And I, and I, I, I don't, uh, I just don't think this is a problem. I mean, there, there are a lot of possibilities for what somebody can do. Um, you know, if somebody wants three parking spaces to a unit, well then, good for you, build it. I don't think anybody's saying you can't. Uh, if you get into lot coverage issues, well, that's part of the lot constraint itself. I mean, if you're trying to do all this on a half-acre lot, you might have a problem. Um, there are multiple places where there's more than square footage enough on lots to, to make things happen. And I come back to what I was saying earlier, that, that the arbitrary number that was pulled, you and I talked about, of, of, the, of the 10, sort of where in town would you plop a building the size of Green Mountain Studios? There's, there's only a few, and, and you know, I know somebody that's, that's having a conversation that has nothing, nothing to do with me, so I don't have any conflict on this, but, but there are possibilities, and, and you know, as far as the financial uh, end of it, I think as soon as you allow this to start having sold units within the complex, uh, those units become subject to market share pricing, or market pricing. And you, 
one of the reasons that the units were held down in size in the conversations you and I had was to uh, minimize the likelihood that it would just become a vacation home for somebody who wants to be here a few months out of the year. Um, you, you, you can't, that doesn't necessarily address the fact that, that somebody could build a thousand foot unit and try to get three grand a month for it, but they're going to have a really hard time getting a senior to pay three thousand dollars a month in a thousand foot unit. So I think that if you constrain the size of the unit, you help control what somebody can dream about getting for as far as rent. I don't think this is restrictive. I think there's a lot of possibilities to what somebody can do. So let me keep going then. Uh, uh, this, it's always been the desire of the board to push uh, senior housing into, to keep it in the Lyme Common District. And I mean, <coughs> as, as, as Ellen points out, walkability is nice, but um, there's, that's, it's hard to see how that's going to happen. What, what, what would happen, what bad thing would happen if this kind of development were to be allowed outside the line common district? I mean, this is a question that I don't, I don't fully understand. Uh, I'll, I'd like I'll, to I'll answer it probably differently than you mm -hmm. would like me to answer it. But, um, I'd like to, and this is going with what David said, I want to start mm -hmm. at a place where we can, we can see what happens. It's really helpful to hear from Brett that he thinks that it's quite feasible. And if it's quite feasible, we'll find out, you know, reasonably quickly. And if it if it isn't, uh, then I would be willing to expand. And as I said to Alan, I'm open to considering uh, the, the southern part mm -hmm. of of the of the town because because I want to see what happens. And I, I I'm I'm saying what. What are you concerned would be bad if... What would be bad about started, it's starting in a, in a limited area and seeing what would happen? Uh, I think the very serious risk that it wouldn't happen. And so we go a few years and then no developer comes up. Well, from what I'm hearing, it sounds feasible. And I think, Rich, I think also... If a developer really wanted to do something in Lyme, mm -hmm. and they said, well, I absolutely can't do it in the con Lyme Common District, they could come to the planning board and they could say, with this, in the way we have it written, they could say, well, I can get a piece of land down near, say, Pineview Farms or whatever, and this is what I'd like to do, and the planning board could, we would certainly look at that, because with the way this is written now, with having site plan review, we have a lot of mm -hmm. leeway. So, so that's not true, Tim. You're saying this is only available in the common district. You can't allow it outside of the common district. No, but I'm saying that if somebody came, a developer came and said, I really would like to do this somewhere else, I think the planning board would look at that. And, and what would the mechanism, I mean, I, this is a... a would have to be a change to the ordinance. Yes, through yes, the yeah, right. Right. But, and, I, and I would add that, from my point of view, that if, if the, the board... Um, felt that it wanted to add the, the commercial district um, area in the southern part of town, I would be open to considering. Mm -hmm. And and I still want to ask the policy question, why why couldn't this be elsewhere? Elsewhere than where? I mean I made the suggestion on Route 10. Yeah. Why could why would it be well, I think Dave, what, David, what, David, what David, addre David addressed concerns about going north. I'm sure you recall. I mean, I, I guess I'd I guess I'd like to have them called out specifically. In, in, uh, did you do you remember? Oh, you specific said? going north, the, the adequacy of Route 10. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you have a uh, for the most part a very twisty, turny road mm -hmm. um, that is narrow, um, and adding a lot of traffic onto. Mm -hmm. route and I, 10. and I, I would add that. For seniors, I would rather have them in, in the southern part of town than mm -hmm. the north because they're that much further from the hospital, from uh, the
places that they would be closer for. I mean, I go to the dentist, I go to the doctor, mm -hmm. I go to the chiropractor all five minutes from, from the commercial district. Okay. Would it change your opinion um, of the adequacy of Route 10 North if when Pinnacle went to the, uh, to the DOT, and one of the questions that was clear that we had a proposal for 36 units there, the DOT engineer said, we don't even need a traffic study. I still think that, you know, that's one project. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, opening up Route 10 for multiple projects, mm -hmm. um, I think Route 10 North just doesn't have the adequacy um, for supporting that. Because, you know, again, you're not talking about just one, you're talking as many as you yes, opened it, up you know, for. And you I, I also don't want to keep going around on this. We had this discussion, we, mm -hmm. we okay. it was raised with the board, and the board did not support it. Okay. Right. So I'll speak up as a public member and say I totally disagree I understand. with that opinion. So okay. there's plenty of people out there that would disagree with that opinion. Okay. And I would not suggest that this board follow just because <laughs> David's opinion is it's too dangerous. It's not just because of that. It's well, also, well, that's what I'm hearing. That's exactly board, what I heard. The, the only opinion. response you said was that David addressed that. So I said David addressed his concerns with, you know, come on, Rusty. Give me a break. No, I think you need so, in any event, yeah, I come here to event. listen and I, I hear the same thing I've always heard. I will say that, one, I don't understand the limitation to, to your age. I tried to get your attention to answer that when we were talking about the age limitation. That You don't need to limit it. If the market is going to be such that 70 and 80 year olds in the town of Lyme are going to buy up all these units. It doesn't matter that the limit says 55. What are we concerned about? So what, to, what would to, you like? Are you going to see 55-year-olds no, taking I, up the space you, that the 70-year-olds like? want? What would you like? I think you follow a guideline that says 55 and over is a senior. I mean, those are state and, and federal guidelines. I mean, why are we trying to put a more restrictive... Well, we've got two guidelines that, yeah. by state and federal, 62 or 55. And, the, and so the 50, you're, you're, again, I'm trying to be as more, more liberal because, and I will say this flat out, that when you say shall, and it sets up all this flexibility, the perception around this community is that that flexibility is that you will get denied at this board, not that you will get extra, you know, live. Oh, because people keep so, perpetuating that myth. Well, that's really the problem. So, so, so anybody looking at this that I've talked to is, is saying they want to see specifics that they know what they can deal with and they don't have to rely on the I, opinions. I think it's, so it's I, I, I would agree lie. with you. Can't. I would agree with you that the more specific we can be, the better. Okay. Yes. So, I Rusty, let me. I, I wanted to talk to that. So, last meeting, uh, you said that the 55, 80 percent of the households have to have per, one person 55 and older. What, what do you mean? I said that. I mean. That was the consensus of the meeting. I, I'm, not, I'm not following what you're saying. That. No, I think it was 62. 62 was no you were saying 50, the federal standard of 80% of the occupied units must be occupied by at least one person 55 years of age or older. That's one of the that standards. One, that's one of the standards. Yeah. And the judgment was that's too young. And I want to understand that. I yeah. want to understand the concerns. I think I already it. told you what my personal concerns are, okay. is that I'm more concerned with what I consider to be a vulnerable de uh, demographic, and it came out of my years of going to the aging in place mm -hmm. and discussions and listening. That's my personal opinion. And so, so can I understand that? It, so what you're saying, though, is that if it was 55, then, oh, then, then we would have people coming in at... 55 and not 70 and taking up the spaces that we want. So I'm trying to understand when you set a rule What are you trying to that, avoid? I, You're I'm, trying I'm, to avoid what I'm trying to direct target is that demographic exactly what I said So you the, those, the those are the people those the, are the people who the, the logic I'm hearing is make it younger because they aren't going to come anyway Which doesn't make any sense to me. 
No. If they if they aren't going to come anyway, then why do we need to make it 55? And if they really, if we want to say here, make it 55, that's right. fine. It's really going to be 70s and above anyways. That's what you just said, and that's what I, you just said. Yeah, but as a, but as someone who's coming in to do a spec development, they're not going to look to that. They're going to say, what's the open? Okay, the open end. Maybe this community is only going to be the 70 and overs, but that and that's fine because it'll fill my unit. That's great. But if it isn't, I want to know that. 55 and old could help fill that unit. Well, and then you know what? If if we did this and we weren't getting anywhere, then I would then I would go. You know, I would definitely consider going to that. I see. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. I. I, I, I think I, it's, but what I'm hearing from from Brett is that it is. I mean, are you you're tell, again, saying it's it's feasible, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. Well, I, I think the board needs to look at how how feasible is it. Brett looks at one or two. He might have one or two of his properties that he's thinking about. No. But, I mean, I'm not <laughs> You did your study, and I, and I still haven't seen the results that I say to say, where in the world is all this new inventory going to happen in the town of Lyme? And right now, do you, do we, you need, give, I, we need we don't a new a, inventory. Uh, yeah, it's, un, it's unfinished, so it's we un can't give it to you. So, <laughs> so finish it. I mean, it's almost well, done. Yeah, well, it's just a matter of me trying to find some time yeah. to. Anyway, as soon as David finishes it, you can have it. Okay, but but the, will that? Are you satisfied that you can identify five or ten properties that are potentials for this? Not that they're going to happen because yes. it, it takes a developer I mean, that, to come in I mean, and do I it. No, I'm not certain about anything, Rusty, yeah. because uh, we're dealing with generalities, but. We put a lot of time into it, and what we came out with is that, yeah, my impression is that, is that there are uh, between five and ten, depending upon whether we whether we um, include uh, properties that um, are partially in the common. Uh, but no, I can't say anything with certainty, and neither can you, neither no, can anybody in this room. That's we're doing the best we can with the information we're gathering. Okay. Yes. I, I think, you know, that if, if you, somebody wants to pass something relative to the zoning ordinance to help this all happen, and we'll see how it goes in the next few years, I think that might be optimistic. Because, you know, all of these properties anywhere in town, they don't change every year, ownership. So, you know, it may take a while. And, and so if, it, and, if it's but gonna, I'm just saying that it, 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 that that's perfectly normal. If, if if there's going to be an expectation, if we're going to have a senior project in town in a year or two, just because we changed the ordinance, not because the town's difficult to deal with, but just because you know somebody's not done with their house yet and they don't want to sell it. Well, I I would say that I would be more likely to consider consider other areas in town if if it was going to take a, a long time. Because I, I, I do think that for, certainly for the demographic I'm thinking of, it, you know, time is an issue. Okay, I had another uh, question. Uh, the wording says the dimensional controls shall be established by the planning board based on the character of the land and neighborhood. Uh, how would a developer know what might or might not be permitted? Based on character of the land and neighborhood. Yeah, I think we we can address that. I mean, we can do a better job. Okay. These these are provisional land, but I, I think that's a lot of this came out of other language within the zoning ordinance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it, it just. But, but I, I I think what a good I, I, idea would be from at this point, and I'm uh, stupid enough to volunteer, is is. Um, I'll do a rewrite. You can do a rewrite. Anybody who wants to do a rewrite mm -hmm. can do a rewrite. In fact, the more people who do a rewrite, the better. So, so I, why, why doesn't everybody? Well, but I'm not done yet, John. I, I'm not saying you're so, done. Okay. I'm addressing something. Okay. All right. Why doesn't everybody um, do a rewrite with their own language uh, so that we can move this thing along and next time uh, hash out some of these issues that. Richard's raising. So, and um, what guidance could, can we point a developer to about the character of the land and neighborhood? Are, are there any board, planning board decisions that say 
this particular property is consistent with the character of the neighborhood so that the developer can say, oh, clever, not stucco. Uh, I don't know what all the characters okay, are. You're, you're, fa you're falling into a classic policy trap here. Yeah. What you're saying is we need more flexibility. Yeah. But then you also are saying what we need to do is nail it down and be very specific. To no, developer, actually, I'm saying exactly. the opposite. I, I, I'm sorry if, if you misunderstand. I'm saying this, by saying that the planning board is going to determine this based on the character of the neighborhood, I don't think our, our ordinance is real clear on where we talk about the character of the neighborhood. Right. And so... So do you want I, to make the ordinance more specific, or do you want to just drop the language and just say you don't Drop that language, yes. So that we don't care about the character. I... I'm not sure how you're going to get a developer to come in and say, geez, I'd like to spend ten or $50,000 putting together a proposal for the town, but who knows what the town thinks about the character of the neighborhood. Um, there's, there's not a lot of pressure. So you don't think there should be any language addressing the character of the neighborhood? I think that I, well, I, I already told you what I think about so it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, so no, I, I think I think, think this is this is another hurdle for a developer to. So look what do at we say? Say no. What do we say to the neighbors when we're pushing this change in the ordinance? You know, potential neighbors of this project. So, what do you say to the developer? They no, I'm saying, no, no, no. You what do you say? Said. So, the developer, the neighbors, my understanding of the ordinance, and maybe I misunderstand, my understanding of the ordinance is that the, it does not specifically address in concrete, legally binding, legally actionable terms what the character of the neighborhood is. I can tell you that I have I've researched various um, senior housing articles in various towns, and it's a it's very common wording. It's it's almost boilerplate that it, addressing the area and neighborhood. Okay. So, so, the, so you think it would not be a so you're telling me that that would not be a hurdle for a developer. I'm, it's a balance. It's always a balancing act, Rich. And Rich, Rich, Rich something you, also to uh, kind of just if you reread the language yeah. in here, it says it can improve it under site plan review based on that. So this is you're going into the site plan review regulations now, sure. which is mm -hmm. something that the board is going to have to address if a change is passed. And the board has the authority then to look at this through site plan. The board is going to have to look at the site plan regulations mm -hmm. um, and address this. Okay. Um, but it's it's not something that's addressed in <coughs> the ordinance. It's addressed by site plan review. Then I guess I would suggest dropping the part of the phrase that says based on the character of the land and the neighborhood. It's got to be site plan review. You got a site plan review. So that's that's a good process. So. With, with all of these articles that have that in there, you think that's just a mistake? I think it causes a developer to look at this and say, I don't know what the planning board's going to say this week. They might say, no, this is not the character of the neighborhood. I need everything in site planning review. I got septic, I got a driveway. I don't so, and <coughs> but it, so I would just say drop that language. Okay. Let me, let me get the big, big picture. It's been my observation that any developer that comes to a town, any town that has zoning, they don't, they have no, there's no zoning that spells it out. They don't know. They have to come and they have to discuss it and the planning board has to go through all this. So, I mean, that's everywhere in the whole United States, I think. Well, you know, no, well why say, why are, say my answer is Laconia. <laughs> yeah. So there are towns that, that have very little zoning and they drop language like this and they don't enforce it and people yeah, come in they don't have and it's a freaking hodgepodge and it looks like hell mm -hmm. and it looks like a lot of towns in America um, that are 
I bet yeah, that you can usually tell just by driving through the town that they haven't they haven't tried to enforce anything like this. You have other ones that are immensely prescriptive. It must be clabbered. It must be this paint. It must be this. You go to go to um, uh, Nantucket. Mm -hmm. um, they're very very strict on the the types of siding that you can have, everything mm -hmm. like that. We don't want to be either at ends of those extremes. And what John was saying is, this is pretty common, is you're, you're, you are telling the, the developer that you must be cognizant of the character of the, of the town. And now, do they know exactly what that means? No, they don't. But they ought to at least try. And then it and becomes a negotiation. A, a big mystery and then it becomes a negotiation that says, you know, that flashing yellow yellow McDonald's sign is a bad idea. How about if you just do a painted one? And that's what happens in a lot of towns. They go through that negotiation. Mm -hmm. And is it is it difficult and onerous sometimes? Yes, it is. But that's how towns are supposed to deal with it. How towns commonly deal with it to try to come up with something that meet. And, and will some people complain and say it's too restrictive or? They're being, you know, they're anti-business or whatever. You're going to get, you're going to get a range. But I, uh, I'm pretty confident that, you know, I've lived in blind forever, but I have lived in small towns that have dealt with the same issue. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have language like that in there, then you'll get proposals where somebody will come in with a brick cube or a or a um, <coughs> concrete cube that's really affordable. But it looks like hell, and we don't have any way to say no, any way at all to say no. Um, that that's inconsistent with the character of the town. So I, I think you're going to have to leave some of this for some of this for give and take with the um, development. Uh, Brett, did you, you raised your hand, or, yeah, or have you have you forgotten not, no, what you wanted to say? And, and I'm I'm kind of agreeing with what you're saying, but even within the common district, you know what might get along on. This end of the Lime Common District might not do so well in the dead center on the back side of the common, for example. Sure. So I think it needs to be tied the way it That's is. Why it says neighborhood. And then, as yeah. far as the concerns of, of, well, what's somebody supposed to know what to do? Um, what, through the years that I had the excavation machinery and, and did jobs for everybody else and more just my own stuff, all you got to do, you don't have to spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars. Come in and talk to that guy right there. And he'll tell you real fast what, what works and what doesn't. And he'll tell you real fast what you need to go to see the board about. And you can decide if you want to go see the board. And, you know, I haven't come before the board a whole lot. I've always managed to read the zoning ordinance and understand what the interpretation is and just do, what, do what's permitted. Um, certainly we spent a good deal of time before the board over the Maxfield thing for reasons really other than immediately what we're talking about. But, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember that really well. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the reality but I, is, I, I, because I still have a concussion. We would, see, we would see the same thing, you know. I just um, don't think it's a big onerous thing. I, guess. I don't either. No, and that's why you have preliminary reviews, and that's why you no, encourage people fine. to come in early it, with it. It's don't it's spend it takes an hour's time to come in and get the lay of the land. And, and I don't think right. it's a great mystery. What, what, you know, it's not like you have to be Sherlock Holmes to go to a neighborhood and see. Get a general idea of what fits. What fits? It's not a mystery. But so if a building came out and it had ten units at twelve hundred square feet, and it had all these other things, it's almost by definition different from the neighborhood. Yeah, but I, I mean, we're already we're affirmatively saying that this is permitted in the neighborhood. But, but right. to like the examples that David was pointing out, mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit respectful of your neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. And you do a lot of that through the preliminary discussion. Yeah, and and um, you know I think you can read in the newspaper in the Valley News about developers who reach out to their neighbors and make an effort, mm -hmm. generally do a lot better than those who don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so, we already talked about that. Um, there's another phrase there, and 
other issues re relating to the future use and enjoyment of the property. What what would that cover? Uh, and and what are you talking about? Uh, it is in e, e, the, the very end of E. And again, that was existing language mm -hmm. I took out of the ordinance. I have no, I'm, you know, not, so, have no, uh, no pride of office. No yeah. pride. I, I just, you know, I guess I try to, when I write something new like this, I do try to keep the wording consistent with the rest of the which ordinance. Is, which so. is very helpful and important. But I would say again, do a rewrite and write it the way you want it. And I'm saying that to everybody. And I would really urge everybody to do it um, so that you have a voice. Uh, we talked about ground floor. We talked about ownership. Uh, last one I have, it says that the subdivision, oh, this is ownership. Um, you mean about the condo thing? No, this is about the, um, the zoning easement. I would like to, because I, I, you know, in my world, you know, things, I automatically, mm -hmm. you know, think of it things the way a zoning easement is much different than a conservation easement or mm -hmm. other type of easement. It runs with the zoning ordinance. So at some point in time, if, let's say, there is a restriction in zoning, uh, there is for ADUs, you can't, if you have an ADU, you can't create a condo out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you actually sign an easement that says, I won't do that uh, for a, um, when you have an external uh -huh. ADU. So you create the zoning easement, mm -hmm. gets registered up in Grafton, says, I'm not going to subdivide and create um, a second property out of this. Um, so the idea is that if the zoning ordinance changes, mm -hmm. and that is no longer a requirement, that all those easements go away. Okay. And so it's not like a conservation easement that says, now that you have this, you will never be able to do this. It is something that um, the town has decided. In, per in perpetuity, right. regardless. Conservation easements are right. perpetuity, perpetuity right. Yes. regardless of changes. Right. You know, in this case, a zoning easement, if the zoning changes, mm -hmm. And it's no longer well, what, what's that zoning. referring to that, that you're talking about? Uh, this well, is the ownership. I have I put it in that you would uh, sign a zoning easement. Uh, I went with the same language from the ADUs saying we'll not okay. subdivide. But, but again, that's something that everybody yeah, can, can rewrite to their right. satisfaction. Maybe you couldn't have condos. Right? Well, you couldn't sub, well, yeah, because that's the only way to subdivide a building. Right. right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. I, I'm not really comfortable with that. Yeah. That's all. That's all I'm remembering. That was plenty. It was right. Um, I spent some time doing that. Well, I did. That, that's fine. That's good. It's uh, it's, it's good to get pressed on the issues. Um, and there's a gentleman here who would like to say something. Just short on the condo thing. I think if you allow condos, you're going to lose control of this fairly quickly, and somebody can come in and build it. Come to the town. Sell it off in condos and wish you all well. And I think that's where it would I'm, I'm just concerned about the legality. Yeah, of that. And I, I hear that. And I, I think yeah, they I see that sort of shorten his way through it. But I think. Yeah. Brett, help me understand what you mean by that. I, that people come in, build so, it. Somebody come in and build yes. it and sell the condos, whether they sell them to seniors or find another loophole through something. Right. But pretty soon you've got, you know. Uh, some some people that aren't very well to do that might live on Goose Bond Road that suddenly can't afford a three hundred thousand dollar condo in this complex that was built, and I think that that uh, um, you'd kind of be defeating the purpose of what everybody's trying I mean, to do. The eighty-five Garwood Fox Highway is a perfect example, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. It's an, yeah. What's yeah. what? Well, I think tell me more. About they wouldn't, I think Brett, I think what you're saying is that they they're not affordable for no, other people. No. That's all you need. Yeah, but uh, I mean, for, I, I I really doubt that we can do it legally, and I'm I'm I mean I'm hoping that we can get affordable stuff. But you know, if somebody comes in and, and plays by the rules and you know that does doesn't does it that way, you know, so be it. Um, I'm not so sure of that. But I, I mean, I understand I, what I you're just, saying. I do think you're going to lose control of it. Okay. And you'll, 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 
We'll regret it. We'll yeah, ruin I the think day. You will. But yes. whoever builds it has that option that they can not sell. I mean, they can do. Well, it. they do. They but but, but, but that's not what this conversation or this meeting is about. Right. This meeting is about trying to help people that might not be able to afford to do something else. Right. So if, if right. you're going to take that view, which I think is the correct view, then you need to try to find ways to contain it. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with that. Again, and I'm not sure how you're going to do it, but yeah, the, the, I, I, the, I, I, the I nearest way I can see to do it is that it's held in common ownership. Right. Now somebody has to run a business here. And certainly, you know, then you get into, uh, you can't control how much they charge for rent, but market value of floor space in a rental right. kind of self-limiting. Yeah, and I think Ray's saying, I think what Ray was saying was that, you know, you just you can't do it to make it affordable. I disagree. But, yeah, I, I, know, I know you disagree, but yeah. I, I'm just saying, I think that's what yeah. Ray was. Yeah. And I think, you know, the second floor thing, I, I think if you put in uh, 10 units on the first floor and 10 units on the second floor and place it anywhere, I don't care where in town, it's not going to belong in this town. You're going to have one hell of a big building. And, and if you ever have a fire, I can't imagine to get people off the second floor. Yeah, yeah, well, that, I mean, the, the safety thing is oh, yeah. with, with seniors is a big deal. Yeah, but, but, like, this, this is a... In terms of a, I mean, this would be considered a, a second floor in this building, even though it's, you know, it's not really used, is it? No, it's just all open space. It's all open space. Well, yeah. That's but just but I mean, it has the appearance of a, of a second floor, and you know, in my house, my house, it basically that area is used. It's a, it, it, it's a, it, it's it's living space. So I mean, I could see where a second floor. Might. Then you get the old people falling down the stairs. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. I mean, there were a lot of people who thought Maxfield should have become senior housing and wouldn't do it just because of the second floor business. Yeah. So, anyway. So, yeah. It's a tough call. I think there are some people who feel that, you know, second floor, you know, no big deal. But, um, so you know. what, would, what, would a, what would a single floor building look like? Well, if you look at Green Mountain Studios, you could fit 10, 1,200 square foot units in that building. On the first um, floor, forget the second level. Yeah. On the first floor, and that's, now, you have the building in the front, and then it's kind of L-shaped and it goes out to the back. So there's, it, it's more than what you just see from the road. You have to look at it carefully, because you see a lot of space going further back. Um, it's a big building. Oh, I know. Um, right. And then you'd have a roof. To make it look decent, you'd have to have a roof pitch that was at least 912. Yeah, so then yeah. you'd have all that, you could have storage of, you know, you'd have a lot well, of storage. Well, that's again the idea of, you know, allowing the multiple uses. Well, you, you start getting into well, multiple uses, but, but in a building that size, you probably wouldn't put a full basement under it. You'd probably put a portion of the basement for utilities for the whole building. The rest would be on frost walls and a slab, because by the time you buy all the floor structure and all the concrete below, you, you Put a, quite a quite a bit on your price tag, and it's it's quite interesting how much a deck costs, whether it's a first floor deck or a second floor deck. So if you're trying to build something that's reasonable and economical, you're not doing it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot a lot of assisted living places are, you know, they, when you see them built, they're uh, they're on one level. Yeah. And you, when well, you look to look at um, when you start getting into um, and I, I don't know all the building codes, but take a, you know, going up second level, does your um, stairwell have to be one of the fireproofed, right. you know, concrete and steel uh, stairwells? Uh, you know, if you have to do that, then your, your price, like more an elevator, but, you know, an elevator, if yeah. uh, you lose power. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with Sunpeak Cove um, down where my uh, mother-in-law lives. And they have three floors. Uh, she was on the on the second floor, and they would hold fire drills. And I did that at Kendall once a month, and she had to show that she could walk from her unit down to and out downstairs and out. Uh, I'm pretty sure the stairwells are sheetrock, and they're clearly metal stairs and all yep. wide all those things, um, and they're very cognizant of the fact that, yep, yep, Madeline can still walk, and so that's fine, and when she, she did fall and break her hip, so she was in a wheelchair, and that, 
that didn't heal, and so they got her on, into a ground floor unit where she could still roll herself out to grade. Um, so uh, there's at least one example of what I consider first-rate uh, assisted living. It's, on, it's got three floors above. This, this isn't a conversation about assisted living, though. Yeah, this isn't assisted living. I mean, and that's where I think that the, there's, yeah, you know, I mean, that the, the, you may get a group that wants to do assisted living that has, um, you know, people there to mm -hmm. make those calls. Right. Um, I'm not sure that's what people in line want at the moment. I think they're looking for um, ways to downsize, and they don't necessarily want to have all the and pay for all those extra uh, services. You know, they're looking for a place that they can live, that they can you know, socialize, social networks, that close enough to uh, the, the downtown, to you know, the limited services in the downtown. Right. But um, again, you know, as soon as you start putting in the, the personnel to monitor that, to enforce that, um, if you have, don't have an, a, a somebody who can move downstairs. Mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I personally, you know, if you have an apartment that is self-sufficient, and then somebody says, nope, you're going to have to move out of your apartment down to another one. Right. Um, not that, that's not going to happen. Right? Not going to happen. Right. Um, and it's, it's, if you're in assisted living where it's not that you, know, you, you have all your other services provided elsewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, my mother so, was in a, a similar situation in Arizona where you can basically downsize within the facility, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's great. But there are people there twenty four seven. You know, there's just, you can't get through the front door <coughs> without either them letting you in or you know having a special pass that you get at the front desk for your stay. Um, and all those things are going to add to the cost. Right? Well, and and, and and but what I hear you saying is. I'm not quite sure where we're going with this. So can, this I, I'd, like, I'd like to just jump in what here because it's, yes. it's getting like okay. so. What, but but to for, for everybody, the way this is going to play out is what I I hope you will all write up your own version of what David did with, with your suggestions. And the, right now it's just the four of us. We've got we're missing some critical people here. We're going to have to go through this yep. again. And at a certain point, and very soon, very soon, we're going to have to argue it out and, and come up with the best consensus we can. And all of us are going to have to give up some of, uh, as they say in the writing trade, some of our little darlings and, uh, and compromise. Um, because I feel like that's what, what our job is. I mean, barring, I mean, if somebody just hates it, Top to bottom, okay, so then they're against it. But I would like the board to, to at least try to come to a consensus of, of what's best for the town, which means we can't all get what we want. Okay. But we it can also, get what it, we need. It, it can't necessarily fit every single scenario we can dream up. No, we can't address think, I think what I'm trying to do is is minimize it trying to trying to say what what do we think we can do that's feasible that's limited that has as few as few moving parts as we can put in there so the idea for example of assisted living or condo owners those just those add complexity they, they, they make it so that you lose control over what you're trying to achieve um, so let's get the basic straightforward model done first and then if people start coming up and saying, yeah, but what if we want to do this? What if we want to do assisted living? What if we want to do that? Then we take that up in the next, in the next phase. Understood, but we'll, we'll, we'll argue that out yeah, the other next thing time. You have to think about it as getting it passed. Well, that's right. 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 Something that and, and, one, vote and, for. and one thing we're doing in a vacuum here, quite frankly, uh, is we're assuming everybody in town loves senior housing. Everybody in town doesn't love senior housing, and particularly, um, you know, we we I think we have to be sensitive 
to the particularly sensitive to the areas we're introducing it to. Um, so that needs to be in the balance. Um, did you have anything else? I had one other minor issue, if I can find my one piece of, one copy of it. Um, we, Dartmouth Skiway has a uh, building that has three uh, propane tanks, they're smaller, and they would like to put a roof over those propane tanks. That is the, the a very basic drawing from Doug Holler of what it is they would like to do to cover those three tanks, just the, the little green line you can see. Um, it would be an open area, just a roof. I, th I think. I'd, I'd be more comfortable when we had a fuller board. All right, I'll tell Doug, I'll bring it up with it. When, when, when we have more people here. Yeah. Um, it's coming off underneath that other roof? Yeah, just, I think it would come off underneath the other roof. And just, he's just trying to get some protection for the, the tanks so that, you know, I mean, I, My first reaction is it looks fine, but I, I, I don't want to... That's fine, I will tell Doug. We have uh, two regular members and two alt alternates here, and. I think we need to have a fuller. What are the rusty barrels on the? On the <laughs> oh, those are probably fuel barrels. <laughs> <laughs> no. The compliant, the environmental compliance yeah. auditor in me is looking at those, going, "Uh oh, uh, there's some <laughs> bunch of stuff that goes in those barrels that isn't an uh oh, though." Uh, okay. Um, all right. So are we done? All right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Motion. To, no. No. No motion. Just adjourn. Okay. And and please, everybody, write your own version. And if anyone wants this in a word doc, I have to send it out to anybody. Would you send it as a PDF?